Hey, Sean McElroy here with an AutoLine exclusive. Today, I'm speaking with David Harkey, the president of the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. David, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely, Sean. Glad to be here. So I know you guys did some research into some partially automated driving systems and came up with recommendations for how automakers could maybe improve those systems. But before we jump into that, what did you or how do you guys uh, categorize partially automated driving systems? So we categorize these systems really in two buckets when you think about it, uh, driver assisted systems and then driver replacement systems. And the Society of Automotive Engineers, of course, has their nomenclature of levels zero through five, where level zero, one, and two are really the driver assisted systems. And that's what's on the market today. Uh, levels three, which is a hybrid between assisted and replacement, and then four and five, which are replacement, are not currently on the market. There's research ongoing for those systems. So we're very much focused on these driver assisted systems. And the work that we recently completed was very much focused on level two, uh, which are the systems that allow you to perhaps become a little more disengaged from the driving task, even though that's not supposed to be the case. Right. So, you know, we've experienced these systems like, uh, you know, talking about maybe like Cadillac Super Cruise, Tesla Autopilot, things like that. So they, they've been out in the market for a while now, and people have had their chance to experience them. I know I have, and they're pretty good. Um, you know, but I still think there's some improvements that can be made here. What are some of the things that you guys thought that automakers could do to help keep drivers more engaged with their driving? Well, one of the things that we're concerned about, as you said, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, and they are uh, engineering feats uh, of how you control both the longitudinal uh, part of the driving task in terms of acceleration and braking, as well as how you can combine that with lateral control of keeping you in the center of the lane. Um, one of the things that we're really concerned about is they have become good enough that drivers may become a little over-reliant on these systems, become a little complacent um, and take their, their eyes off the task, so to speak, of, of being the driver and being engaged. And so what we're concerned about and what we were trying to do with these recommendations was come up with a holistic set of principles that automakers should use um, when they're designing these systems and perhaps that a regulator like NHTSA could use when they start thinking about how do we regulate these systems in the future? Um, because there's going to be more of them uh, as we proceed. Yeah, you know, we've seen some problems that the systems have had. Uh, that has been very public in the media. I think most people know about those. Are there limits that should be on these systems? You know, uh, first thing that kind of pops to mind for me, especially living here in Michigan, where it seems like construction is going on all the time, that would, might be a spot where maybe a, a system should be limited maybe, or is that kind of see how you see these? Yeah, one of, so one of the criteria, one of the principles that we're very much focused on is having um, a well-defined, what we call operational design domain, right? Where these systems are allowed to actually work, where you can turn them on. And, and Super Cruise actually has done a pretty good job of this with their system. It's only allowed to operate on interstates and expressway type facilities uh, in the US. And one of the things that does happen uh, in their system is, yeah, when you encounter a work zone, something that is out of the ordinary uh, of what the mapping has shown for that particular roadway, then the system will not operate. And I think that's a really important component that the system has to be able to know when it is outside of its operational design domain and forces the driver to take over. So that is certainly one of the principles that we're uh, recommending. And one of the issues I feel like I've run into with not necessarily partially automated driving systems, but other systems that are part of those, uh, like lane centering, I almost feel like 
the car is kind of like chipping away at the steering wheel, kind of not encouraging what I want to do. Uh, have you seen any of that? Is there an issue maybe there that's coming up? Yeah, there is. And that's, that's another one of the principles is this issue of what we call shared control, right? Where you want the system to uh, help and assist you, hence its name, uh, in keeping you out of dangerous situations. So if you start to encroach over an edge line and perhaps start to run off the edge of the roadway, uh, you want that system to correct that situation and put you back in the lane. Or if you start to, to get too close to uh, a lane line encroaching perhaps onto another vehicle in the adjacent lane, you want that system to recenter you. But one of the things that happens with some of these systems is, is they are a little too aggressive and they do not like to share control uh, with you as the driver. And so if you're passing a, a large truck, for example, and you're more comfortable being not in the center of the lane, but away from the truck a little more, sometimes the systems will not allow you to get out of that center of the lane. And it will actually kick you out of the system at times. And so that's one of the things that we think is really important is that the system allows to you to share control for you to be in control as a driver. Remember, these are supposed to be systems that assist you, not take over for you. And so we want it to take over when you're in those dangerous situations. But otherwise, we want you to be able to drive in a way that you feel comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, it's there's sometimes like a almost like a learning curve with these things that you have to kind of get used to how they act with you. Uh, is that something else that maybe we need to do is better education to the public on, you know, maybe what the limitations of these systems are? Yeah, that's a really important point, Sean. And it's it's one that we know we're going to be involved in for a while is how do we better educate the consumer on what these systems do and do not do, right? And what your responsibilities are as a driver and as an owner of one of these vehicles. Um, and I think that there is a learning curve, as you said, because each system operates a little differently. And our test engineers will tell you from driving you know, multiple vehicles uh, with systems, even, even within the same automaker, um, you know, the, the systems can vary across models of vehicles. And so it's, it really is important for the consumer to understand, for them to learn, uh, for them to be well-educated about how the systems work. There's a big piece of this too that we think falls on dealerships uh, to help uh, consumers when they're purchasing a vehicle that has these systems. There needs to be a training opportunity or an educational opportunity from the dealership to the consumer to really help them understand what these systems can do and more importantly, perhaps what they are not designed to do. Right. And, you know, I feel like there are people that are out there that know, man, they know more than I do about these things easily. And uh, but are those types of people that know a lot about these systems, are they still operating a vehicle in the way they should? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I, I think there's there's probably a mix. Uh, you know, people who are out there who are perhaps operating these systems, they know a lot about them. They know how they work. They they have maybe, and this is the 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 danger, I guess. If you've really learned how these systems work and you think you understand when these systems will warn you about certain situations, that's probably when you're becoming a little too complacent. And one of the things that our test engineers will tell you with some of these systems is to expect the unexpected. And that one of the things that you have to do, it's why you need to keep your hands on that steering wheel, why you need to be engaged in the driving task, because just when you think you're comfortable, all of a sudden that vehicle may decide to make a hard turn to the left and into a guardrail. And if you're not expecting that, uh, then your you know, chances of responding, particularly if you're engaged in some other task that's not driving, uh, your hands are off the steering wheel, your feet are away from the pedals, your chances of being able to recover quickly enough uh, are diminished. So 
let's say the system does detect that a person is not paying attention, they're off doing something else in their mind or looking away or whatever it may be, you know, what should these vehicles be doing to pull them back into focused on driving? So that's the other, let's, let's say that's the third. We've talked about two of the principles. That's probably the third principle uh, that is just as important is, is how do you warn the driver and how do you get them back into the driving task loop? Um, and we think that there are a series of warnings that needs to be included in here. The first can be a simple visual warning that you know can pop up on uh, on your uh, dash or can pop up on a heads up display if you have a heads up display to indicate to you that you need to put your hands back on the wheel you need to put your eyes your eyes back on the road you need to make sure you're engaged in that driving task and then there's a second modality where you can include either a uh, audible warning or a tactile warning uh, in conjunction with that visual warning and then a third mode that puts all three of those together, visual, audible, tactile. And then a fourth one that becomes a little more aggressive, such as pulse braking or something like that. And then finally, if all of those things collectively have not uh, gotten you back into the driving task, then the vehicle will put on its hazard lights and bring the vehicle to a controlled stop. And it will not allow you to re-engage that system uh, on that particular trip. So I think, you know, it's that kind of escalated warning system that we think is really important to have in any of these vehicles to try and get you back into that loop. Yeah, boy, I would say uh, if you're not paying attention after those first four levels, uh, I've got to say there's probably a serious issue anyhow. So, well, and, and that's exactly the point, right? And and it, if that's and that's the reason you want to bring that vehicle to a controlled stop because um, that may indeed be the case that there, you know there could be someone with a serious medical issue at that point, uh, and there's a reason why they're not in in the driving loop. Yeah, and I would, you know, also add that, uh, you know, we're going to see more and more of these systems. So I, I think that we just need to keep testing to see what works, uh, because there's been a lot that's shown already that if uh, a customer or driver feels like these systems are too intrusive to them or are, you know, like I said, chipping away at the steering wheel, mm -hmm. they've been shown to shut them off. Um, yep. And, you know, these are safety systems that do help improve. Uh, the driving situations out there. And, you know, you, you probably, we don't really want to see people shutting those off. Uh, so, you know, doing whatever we can to make sure they're still engaged while not making them feel like the car is being a nanny to them or something like that uh, is definitely going to be important. It's really important. And in fact, we, so we've done some research looking at some of these systems um, and people's willingness to keep them on versus shutting them off uh, with respect to how annoyed they are uh, yeah. by these systems, right? Uh, these, these are called driving assistance systems because we want them to assist um, and keep them out of these dangerous situations. And so not for level two systems, but some of the work that we did looking early on, looking at automatic emergency braking and lane departure warnings, one of the things we found was automatic emergency braking um, was left on more than 90% of the time. Whereas lane departure warnings, which were more annoying, uh, particularly if they were audible warnings, were only left on about 50% of the time. So it, it goes right to your point about people turning these systems off. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's definitely something that, you know, there just needs to be more and more work put into it and see what people respond to, you know, positively, negatively. But, you know, like I said, very important. They are helping. They, they do improve safety out on the road. So they're definitely something that we want to keep looking into and keep developing. Absolutely. Absolutely. David Harkey, president of IHS, thank you for your time today. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Glad to be here.